In ancient Egypt, a pharaoh was considered a god. He considered himself a god as well. There are many problems when considering Egyptian history. Sometimes the pharaoh would wipe out all memory of the pharaoh that preceded him and elevate his own family history as the great leaders of the past. Another problem with Egyptian history is that sometimes there were two pharaohs at the same time, both of them claiming to be the only pharaoh. As with other histories, the older history is less clear and more controversial while the newer history is more proven and established. The backbone of Egyptian history was established by an Egyptian priest named Manetho. He lived in Egypt in the 3rd century BC and wrote the, a history of Egypt. He had access to documents that modern historians do not have access to. Manetho divided his history of Egypt into 30 dynasties. Two more have been added in modern times, making it a total of 32 dynasties. Manetho also divided ancient Egypt into three time periods, which are still in use. The Old Kingdom, the Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom, with two periods of decentralization called the First and the Second Intermediate Periods. The First Intermediate Period is between the Old and Middle Kingdom. The Second Intermediate Period is between the Middle and New Kingdom. Today we are going to focus on the Old Kingdom of Egypt, which ended at about the same time the Akkadian Kingdom ended. There are three main king lists from Egypt in use today. None of them agree perfectly with Manetho or with each other, and all of them are fragmentary, meaning that they have parts which are no longer legible. The Palmero stone, which surfaced on the antiquities market in 1859 and is now housed in the museum at Palmero, Italy. The Abydos king list, which is carved into the wall of a temple at Abydos, Egypt and the Turin Canon, a papyrus writing from the 11th century BC, which is extremely fragmented. We don't have the original book from Anitho either. We only have quotations of it from the first century Jewish historian Josephus. There are no dates given on these lists, and there is much work being done to put modern dates on these kings. Egypt has always been an anchor point for historians because although it has gone through profound political changes, it has always been Egypt. Ancient Greek historians such as Herodotus and Strabo spoke of Egypt. When Egypt became a vassal state of Rome, the Romans explored and carried out restoration projects in Egypt. There were some explorers of the Holy Land who reached Egypt during the Middle Ages. They thought the Great Pyramids were the granaries of Joseph. With the rise of the Islamic Caliphate preceded by Muhammad in 600 AD, Egypt once again became a land of mystery. For 200 years under Islam, it was off limits to Europe. It is controversial how much of Egypt's history was destroyed under the Caliphate, who considered it idolatry. Modern Egyptology began with the invasion and conquest of Egypt by the French general Napoleon Bonaparte. This general, who was soon to rule France and conquer Europe, was interrupting British trade with India. He was interested in exploring the ancient canal of the pharaohs, which was rumored to be dug from Egypt to the Red Sea. He did find the remains of the canal, but never did have the chance to open it up. He was looking for a trading advantage over the British Empire at that time. From that time, countless books about Egypt began to be produced in Europe. The history of Egypt is mostly stated by Manetho through Josephus, but only generally supported by archaeological discoveries. 
The intermediate periods are very much peppered with several overlapping dynasties vying for power. With the rise of Darwinism a hundred years before Napoleon, the overlapping dynasties of Egypt tended to be stretched out one after the other as far as dating goes, making Egypt's beginnings up to 6000 BC. Generally today, evolutionists placed the first dynasty of Egypt at 3100 BC, which ends the prehistoric period, while creationists place its first dynasty shortly after the Great Flood. As time goes on and evidence of Egyptians' contact with other histories emerges, Egypt is coming more into focus. Changing accepted history is a long, slow process. Giving dates to these ancient pharaohs is not easy, and changing accepted norms is even harder. One thing is a fact, much of it is guesswork, and really unknown by fact. With all of that in mind, let's look at the accepted history of Egypt. The first six dynasties of Egypt are named the Old Kingdom period. The Old Kingdom period came to an end at approximately 2180 BC, which coincides with the end of the Akkadian dynasty. The first Egyptian dynasty is attributed to Menes, who founded the city of Memphis on the lower Nile River. Re was one of many forms of sun worship in Egypt. There were also lesser deities, such as the cow, jackal, beetle, falcon, and moon. Anything which inspired awe or was needed for man's nourishment was deified in some way, but the sun was generally regarded as the source of all life. Re, the sun god, was believed to sail through the sky each day to judge the living and to sail through the underworld each night to judge the dead. There are also several legends of how the gods gave birth to other gods the elements of air, water, and land. During the Old Kingdom period, the way the crown of the pharaoh worked was the one on the left, the red one, was the crown of Lower Egypt in Memphis. And the crown on the right, the white one, was the crown of Upper Egypt in Thebes. And when you put the two crowns together, then you have the unified Egypt and that's the crown of the Old Kingdom. The more popular headdress with the long sides and the cobra on the forehead like King Tut or the Sphinx came into use during the Middle Kingdom period. During the Old Kingdom of Egypt, the Great Society of Egypt was still developing as a power and had not yet clashed with the developing powers of the Middle East. The Egyptians were struggling against the Libyans to the west and the Nubians of the Upper Nile to the south for domination during this time. Egypt is generally divided in two, Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, according to elevation. The country surrounds the Nile River with Nubia to the south in the Upper Nile region and Libya to the west. Oftentimes, Egypt has been divided into two centers of power, with a capital city in Upper Egypt called Thebes and a capital city in Lower Egypt called Memphis. The first and second dynasties were each a succession of eight kings or pharaohs. During this time, Memphis was founded as the capital and Upper and Lower Egypt were united into one nation. A government hierarchy was formed with pharaoh at the top then priests and nobility under him, craftsmen under them, and farmers at the bottom. Because the Nile River was very bountiful for fishing and farming and irrigation through canals, Egypt never had to look for resources from other nations. The tombs for these pharaohs are called mastabas. It's like the base of a pyramid with a flat top and sloping sides, with burial chambers in the earth below it. Even in these early times, the burial included many riches and a large number of servants. 
The lesser stepped pyramids were built during the third dynasty. The first of the pyramid builders was Djoser. He had a chief minister named Imhotep, who was a master builder and a great physician. It is supposed that this first step pyramid of Djoser began as a mastaba, but was then built upon developing the stepped pyramid design. The fourth dynasty produced the famous Great Pyramids at Giza. These pyramids, as most people know, are the subject of much speculation as to their purpose, from a porthole for the soul of the pharaoh to enter the spirit world, to a part of an intricate ancient machine which once powered the entire Earth's system. We still don't know for sure what the actual purpose was behind the pyramids. During the fourth dynasty, the pharaoh Snefu is well known for initiating military campaigns into the Sinai, Nubia, and Libya. These pharaohs of the fourth dynasty were pushing the limits of their greatness, building bigger and better monuments and attempting to expand the kingdom. During the first four dynasties, the pharaoh was viewed as Re himself in bodily form and worshipped as the sun god. During the fifth dynasty, the pharaoh was reduced in rank to son of Re rather than Re himself. He was an earthly manifestation of the sun, but not the sun itself. This probably was due to hard to answer questions being asked. It is speculated that these changes were taking place because when a pharaoh died, he would take all of his riches with him. All of his servants would also die and be buried with him as well. The pyramids were getting larger and the burials as well were getting far more extravagant. This was at great cost to the state and to the people. This change from Pharaoh being Re to becoming the son of Re was an attempt to keep the people appeased that this was a worthwhile belief to keep alive. During the sixth dynasty, the cult of Osiris developed. Before this, only kings and elite were to go to the underworld after death. But Osiris offered a place in the afterlife to the people. This gave the Osiris cult the power to overshadow other cults over all of Egypt simply by the number of believers. It was also during the sixth dynasty that the old kingdom fell into decay and eventually fell apart, leaving leadership to local governors of city-states. This was probably due to the state going broke because of large elaborate funerals. The pharaoh not leaving an inheritance but taking it with him, as it were, even servants and slaves. As Egypt's religion developed, the pharaoh became less godlike and the common people were elevated in status by the Osiris cult. This also would lead to a decline in centralized government as it became more apparent what the cost and benefits were to having a great pharaoh. Osiris was said to once be a good king of Egypt, the shepherd of his people, who was murdered by his brother Seth out of jealousy. Isis, the faithful wife of Osiris, resurrected Osiris as the ruler of the underworld, making him equal to Re, who ruled over the living, while Re lost the underworld to Osiris. Since Osiris ruled the underworld, it was no longer only the elite who would go to the afterlife. The great pyramids and mass killing of slaves was no longer necessary. The layman had access to the underworld. The central government eventually crumbled. There was no spiritual need for Pharaoh, leading to the first intermediate period of city-states and local governors, which lasted for 140 years. It is interesting that the name Seth appears in the scenario of a brother murdering a brother over jealousy, because in the Genesis chapter 4 account of Adam and Eve, Cain killed Abel his brother out of jealousy and God caused Cain to wander the earth as a fugitive. Adam and Eve then had a third son, Seth, 
who became the forefather of Noah. Now the question arises, did Moses get the idea from Egypt or did the ancient Egypts get the idea from Noah? This question has not yet been answered. The fact is that the stories from the book of Genesis are related to mythology from Egypt to Sumer and in places in between. The origins of these legends are still up for debate. We will tackle this issue with more detail in a later episode. We are still gathering the evidence. So now we've looked at the old kingdom of Egypt, Upper and Lower Egypt, Upper being Thebes because it's a higher elevation and the Nile River flows down towards Memphis. And we've pretty much covered the Middle East or the biblical area of the Middle East up to 2200 BC. To go over the history, um, not much has changed except for the histories we just discussed in Egypt and the history of Mesopotamia, which started out with the Sumerian in the lower Mesopotamia and the Amaru which are the Amorites from the Canaanite tribes, uh, migrated down the Euphrates River into Sumeria and eventually uh, conquered it, becoming the Akkadian Kingdom. The Akkadian Kingdom ended at around 2200 BC. At the same time within 20 years of the ending of the old kingdom of Egypt. So basically the Minoan are still there with the uh, bull, the man bull, Minotaur in the basement. Egypt is there surrounded with Libya and Nubia. That triangle piece in between Egypt and Canaan, that is Sinai Desert, the Sinai. Currently, today, the Sinai is a part of the territory of Egypt. We have the land of Canaan, uh, where Israel is today. The land of Arabia, which is still Arabia. And Arabia's uh, trading centers, Didan, Tima, Duma. And the Akkadian Kingdom, which was uh, started by Sargon the Great. The Akkadian Kingdom lasted for 134 years and ended with the death of Naram Sin in 2200 BC. And it's also interesting to note that both kingdoms, the Akkadian and the Egyptian Kingdom, both fell into a period of decentralization at the same time. We'll just make a note of that, and that can maybe come up in later discussions. Perhaps when Naram Sin was killed, he was well known to the Egyptians, and that sent some kind of message to Egypt that caused them to finally go with Osiris and bringing the Ray cult to an end the way it was. Ray kept on but as a one of two instead of just one. In the next episode we will look at the Genesis account of the same time period